this is Anne from the Useless Crafter. All right, so today we're doing an off the mat Mickey, but not what you think. Um, so it's not Mickey, but it's a Mickey sign so that it's gonna be in the backdrop for a birthday photo shoot. So it's gonna match the little birthday boy is gonna be wearing this cute little hat, which I have a tutorial for as well. So <clears throat> this is not, so normally when we tape together the, the back, it's usually an outline. This is not an outline. This fits exactly um, all the elements that are gonna sit on top. So no one's gonna see this. So on this one, I'm just gonna tape face, you know, like on the front. This is gonna go on our foam board and then all our pieces are gonna go on top. Um, when you watch my design space tutorial, you might think that this is unnecessary, but I promise you to have something where all the pieces go on top, it just makes it more stable and sturdy and easier for you to line things up and also glue down. So first thing is we're gonna get our tape. And so just regular scotch tape. Um, I'm going to, you know, still the same, same method. We always wanna like press up against the other piece and then tape down because we want like a full, um, we want, you know, the full piece to be together and without any gaps or anything like that. So let's get these two pieces together. And this is, it, I don't know if it looks big to you or not, but oh my gosh, it was, it was a little difficult. It's so funny because it's actually not that big. It, it's, um, like 20 inches or so. So it's not like, you know, like I've done the 48, you know, four feet dolls and everything, but this one, because it's also circular, the pieces, even though I thought they were gonna be good, they were still too big. It was, um, you'll see, I mean, it's totally, you know, it's totally workable, but I think now knowing how Mickey is, I would have added maybe a few more elements up here um, that we did not do, but anyway. Um, all right, so taping this together. And I'm kind of working differently on this one because this is not an outline. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna do the foam board first. So I have my white foam board. And on this one, I'm just like the other ones, I'm still gonna cut inside the foam board. So you want a pencil to trace your outline Okay, so here's our outline. Hopefully you can see it. Um, okay, I always cut, I'm gonna move my glue gun to the side. Um, I always use the Cricut True Blade it, or True Knife. It is so easy to cut with, but the first thing is, you know, the board's kind of big, right? So I'm just going to trim off. And you see how easy it was to cut that? I love this blade. All right, so again, I'm gonna cut inside the lines. So I'm gonna try to make it one smooth cut though. And so I'm gonna start here in the ears. Whoa, my hand got stuck, okay. <laughs> and then I'm just going to take this off so that I can pull this piece off. Um, I cut kind of close somewhere up here, so I think I'm gonna try just a smoother line, just to make sure nothing shows. Okay, then on this one, um, it's easier for me to go this way, so I'm gonna do this. Whoa, <laughs> I'm concentrating so hard on keeping it stable, I'm slipping on the thing, okay. Ooh. And Mickey's a great shape though, because he's one big piece. Um, you don't need to go all the way to the edge. There's nothing flimsy about this piece. So this will give it plenty of support. All right, so I'm gonna do this line here. Oh, I cut way too close to the line there. So I'm gonna pull this off. Oops, what the heck happened here?
All right, so I'm gonna flip this back over and I'm just going to go in a little bit more because that was way too close to the line. I'm not cutting all the way through. Maybe it's time for a new blade. So I've had this for, I guess over a year and I haven't changed out the blade. So maybe it is time. Because I used to always cut so smoothly. So, all right. Um, we have just the ears. Just a small little piece left. All right, so here's our Mickey. I mean, he's pretty big. Like, it's gonna be a good one. Okay, so we have this. We're gonna lay this on top and you can see when I flip it over, you can see that we cut inside, so none of the foam board should be showing. I think it's pretty good. The only section is maybe up here in this corner. Let me see. I feel like this tip right here, I missed it a little bit, so I'm just going to trim off. Okay, so he's gonna be good. Our foam board is ready, so we'll put that aside. This we're gonna keep down here because that is our centerpiece. So I'm gonna just make sure that this is a little bit more stable, taping all the way to the edge. Um, and again, this, I know, I wasn't paying attention. Um, we don't need it because it's not gonna show, so it should be fine. All right, so let me bring over the pieces. So the inside of Mickey, and I made, so you'll follow along in my design space tutorial, but I made all my gray pieces bigger than the outline so that nothing would show. So I think it went something like this and like this. But we're gonna put down all the pieces to make sure that it's all good. and then we'll, we'll tape down like I always do. So I'm gonna bring the pieces over. Um, what we wanna do also is everything's gonna be layered. So I'm gonna put this to the side for a second and let's start gluing some of these pieces. So we need to create the, um, the glue drops, like the spacers. So, and you can see like, this is what happens, like you, I pulled paper, I put them side by side, but until you cut the actual elements and put everything together, you'll see that some of these, like this was our original color and this was supposed to be our main color, so it's a baby blue, but compared to everything, it just got washed out. So I thought maybe this color would be good, but I mean, this is always a favorite of mine. I buy so many of this pack on Cricut. So, it's the um, pastel sampler pack. You have to buy it in that. You can't get this blue anywhere else. I love this blue. I use it for Jasmine, Cinderella. Um, trying to think who else I've used it for, but it's just such a pretty blue. Okay, so with that being said, I'm gonna flip everything over. So this is, um, yeah, it's just these two items. So I'm gonna, oh, I need more glue. Okay, so I'm gonna put, and you can use phone tape as well for this one, but I'm using my little glue gun. Creating that space and letting it dry, same thing on here. Okay, I'm gonna put this down. I'm gonna move this, same thing with this. Everything is getting some space. So you just want to make sure you 
turn everything around though so that you don't get you don't glue on the wrong side so okay Where am I going to put this? So I'm on the hand if you're wondering why I did my glue dots here is I don't want the tips I kind of want it in the middle of the fingers so that my fingers stay balanced and then here's my glove So maybe even one right here if you put too many though You only have a certain amount of time to glue it all and then position it So I don't want to put you know a bazillion dots at the same time um, So that's my thought process there <laughs> And this one may have to change because this one is sitting on top of the bow tie. So I'm actually not sure where the spacers are going to be just yet. But the nice thing about these glue dots is um, you don't have to use them. And then you can just create new ones. Um, if you're wondering about my glue gun, I love this glue gun. It's by Shore Bonder and Lily, Lynn Lily is the person that designed it. So it has a glue catcher, like it has a little place to catch all the drippings. It has a stand, so it's cordless. Um, it's awesome. And I actually, cause it's always um, out of stock, I bought a backup, it's just, it's the regular Sure Bonder one. Um, it's just not in this cute color. <laughs> All right, so going back to our bow tie, these are dry. I'm gonna flip this over. Let's put this one on, right? You know what, I'm gonna put one more right here just to make it stable. So I'm gonna let that dry for a second. Let's look at our one. Okay, so here's our one, right? So gonna put our glue down okay. and let me get my glue in it was not going in okay and then now I'm gonna put this on Um, it's definitely easier to clean up your your glue, um, like little, I don't know what you call them, <laughs> the, the glue webs. <laughs> um, I would clean up as I would go along, just so that at the end you're not trying to clean up a, a ton and then you get tired of it. So, all right, let's do this one. And I'm trying not to have that by, you know, doing this circular motion, but... You still get it every once in a while. Okay. And then I'm just kind of holding it to make sure it dries balance, like I was saying. Okay, so that's good there. Let's look at our bow. Okay, so our bow tie. And our bow tie has like a super thin outline, so you just wanna make sure it's even. Okay, so that component's ready. Okay, I'm gonna flip this over, make sure that I have the right hand on the right side, cause you never know. <laughs> All right, so that looks pretty good, right? It's so cute. I love this little thing. Um, okay, so let's get the glue down on here. And 
And this one also has a very thin outline. So you just wanna make sure when you're putting it down that you're ready to kind of like finalize it because it does dry very quickly. But look how cute this is. And I don't know if you can tell on camera, but <clears throat> in person you can tell it's totally sticking up a little bit. And I'll put it on the side so you can see like that gives you a lot of space. So everything's gonna look really good stacked on top of each other. And then let's look at this one. So here's the one and you can see it's like sitting on top. And then look at this. You can see like there's a lot of space. There's actually not that much space on here. This one went, went kind of flat. All right, so it's gonna go like this. So that will be perfect. And then it's gonna go like this. So I wonder. All right, so let's do this last glove and then we will continue on. All right, so. So I'll just let that dry before I start pulling it. All right, I'm going to pull more pieces. So the name is pretty much off the mat because the name is, I think it was like almost 18 inches, the background. So, um, so I had, you know, I talked to the client and, you know, she had a color scheme that she was going for, but I told her, um, is this a, okay. Um, that when you have a seam, let's try to do a glitter cardstock and a dark one and then, and see like, you're not even going to be able to see it. It's going to look so good. So on this one, let's flip it around and let's make sure that we tape it totally tight so that we're not seeing that seam. Now, the other thing that's going to help you is, I don't know if you know this, I didn't know for a long time. I just thought it was kind of weird how some some of my pieces came out. So glitter has a, um, what do you call it, like a direction. So let me pull the piece of paper so I can tell you what I mean. So when you're, um, give me a second. Okay, I'm gonna use this white one, is it too crazy? Okay, so this is white glitter card stock, right? So when I cut Matthew, I did matte and then thew, right? I think that's how it came out. So what I wanted to make sure was to make sure that the, the grain goes this way. So I had the name matte this way and th, you know, thew going this way. You don't want to flip it this way because then you're going to have a different direction of the glitter cardstock. So if you cut like, you know, you're slicing it here, but it's still facing up and down like this you're gonna have a more seamless look. So this is the same direction. Um, I can show you some of my old ones, even though it was here and it looked good, but then it, it was like darker blue here and lighter blue here because of the grain of the glitter. All right, so I'm just gonna stop there because that's pretty much as, as much as I can say. Oh, you know, I have a good example. On your couches, if you have like a velvet, right, and you you run your hands through the pillow, you can see the change in direction, right? That's like fabric, like glitter cardstock, it has a certain direction. So if you want to slice it and cut it, you wanna make sure that you're still getting it cut in the same direction. So when you piece it together, it looks like it's one whole piece. Okay, <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say. Um, all right, so let's put this down to make sure that we have it all good but again this as well is going to be stacked so I just want to make sure that all my pieces are here and with you know sometimes it's difficult to tell which which um, way is up so like a W looks the same this way and this way I want to make sure that all my pieces are in the right direction so then when I flip it over to create those spacers that I'm doing it on the correct side so and sometimes you can tell because the paper is different, but sometimes you can't and you just wanna make sure like in this case, this A has to go this way because of this little point. So I just like to lay everything down just to make sure 
that everything looks good before we do it. Because the last thing I want to do is recut at something. That just slows down my productivity. Okay, so this is ready. So I'm, <laughs> I know I'm super careful about this because it's happened so many times to me where um, I've made a mistake because I didn't flip it over and I thought I did and then I flipped it over. You get it. <laughs> All right, so let's create our spacers. I'm trying to think what other tips I can tell you while we're working. Um, the other thing is when you're doing colors, it's definitely, well, if you're doing three layers, it it helps, but sometimes, you know, it depends on the look that you're going for. Um, but I like to do like in, um, you know, a dark and a light. In this case, we went light, light, dark, because you have the three layers, you can play with that a little bit more. But if you only have two layers, um, again, it's going to depend on the look that you're going for, but typically you want it to be an outline and for it to stand out. So you want, you know, dark versus light, but I'm going to show you something right now that you may not see. So in this hat, we want it to be really subtle. So it's gray on gray. You're going to be able to see it in person where it's like just a little bit of a detail, but it doesn't deflect from the overall like theme of the birthday boy and the hat. So it just depends on what you're going for. All right, so these are all done. I'm gonna move these up and then we're gonna work on this. So, and then I'm gonna flip this over as well. So let's get our glue dots going. You know, I'm almost tempted to get out my big glue gun so I can do big glue dots, but it's gonna take a while. And you know what, I'm kind of, whoa. Okay. Um, let's take out, I, oh, here it is. Because this piece is so much bigger. Let's look at these glue dots. So, and see if they are of the same size. So here we go. First, you gotta pop them out, okay. Let me put it right in between. So yeah, I feel like my glue dot is actually bigger. But anyway, so I'm give that a try. Okay. <laughs> um, all right, let's do the other layer of Matthew. So we've still got a few more to go. stick all right so that's all done um let me pull a few more things okay look at this <laughs> It's so stinking cute. All right, let's do the one. It's so many layers. I just absolutely love it. So let's do, let's turn the one around and do the one. Okay. 
Okay, so the one is done. Look at this little, that little reflection thing on the balloon. We use so many different shades of gray and different textures. Um, I can't wait to show you the final. It's gonna be so cute. But look at this balloon. So it's the balloon, the string, and then an outline to the balloon. I absolutely love it. Okay, so. So this is going to be kind of tough. I'm going to do it right here. And I'm going to let the string, let's see if I can get one little piece. Let me see. Oh man, it's so tight. Okay. All right, this balloon. And I just love, so this blue glitter cardstock is from ground up creations it is gorgeous it's like i feel like with the other blues that um you see from cricket or from joann's it's like a really deep either a really dark blue but it's bright i like it's it's a deep bright color this one is it's just so pretty it's this light kind of midnight feel, but not dark. It's so gorgeous. I absolutely love it. Okay, so that's there. Let's do the back of this, the outline of this balloon. Okay, so our balloon is down. Oh, there, my reflection. Okay, so I think we can do yeah, you can flip this. My little reflection is stuck to here. Okay. So here's this. And I would put everything down so that you always have a frame of reference when you're doing this piece. You have this piece so you know where to put things. Okay. So let's do this here. And then flip it over and make sure that you get your outline even all the way around okay let's do this one The other thing with the outlines is if you have three outlines, I typically like for this, the second and the bottom layer, I don't have any of the holes like the A and there's a little, you know, little hole for the W. Um, my, my second and my third um, outline never has it. So I like that look because I feel like it's less distracting because when you have a couple different holes. I don't know. I feel like your eyes get drawn to it and it, it, sometimes it looks a little confusing. So all you need to do is when um, you click on that image, you go to contour and you hide all and it will hide all those little cuts. All right, so Matthew is down. Let's put, let's clean this up. This is a little bit easier because they're individual letters and so you can't you kind of know where they go. Now this reflective um, metallic, you want to make sure that you you pull the the glue strings and not wipe it. If you wipe it, like you don't want to push down and wipe it. Like I'm kind of dusting it off because it's still one piece, you can do that. But it will kind of like stain your um, 
your piece. So, all right, so here we go. It's gonna drive me crazy. Okay, there we go. All right, so this is gonna go down. I'm gonna push this up. I wanna do the one. So here's our one. Here's this layer and then this layer. So, all right, let's do it. So we did on this one, I, I don't think you can tell, but it's got a lot of detail because it's, we did white glitter cardstock on top and then the blue glitter cardstock behind it and then regular white cardstock. So like we really like tried to mix things up and just to make it like different and nice. <laughs> All right, so there's the one. Let's look at our balloon, because I love our balloon. Okay, so here's the back of our balloon. Here's the white. So let's do the white. Perfect. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. So this one, the blue's going to sit on top, but it's not an outline of the white. The white is just the string. So when you're placing this on, you want to place it so you don't see the white. So cute. All right, I'm not gonna place the one or the reflection, but, because I'm gonna let the customer come and decide on that. But we know where the balloon goes because I had to slice everything out to make this work. So, okay, this piece is done. I'm gonna put this up here. So what else do we have left? Oh, we have happy birthday. So I'm not gonna do the happy birthday. What I'm gonna do is let's piece this together a little bit so you can see what it looks like. Otherwise, this video is gonna take like three hours. So I definitely don't want that. <laughs> okay, so we have, so I'm gonna piece it together just so that you can see what the final design looks like. Okay. There was a lot of slicing involved to make this work. If you can believe it, this piece right here, it stretched the size limits of my 12 by 12 cardstock. <laughs> So you can see, we're not gonna see underneath. Everything's gonna be covered by this right here. Why am I looking at this like it's so weird? Okay, this goes down here. Okay, it's gonna look something like this. Then, you see how we don't have anything right there? That's where our balloon is going. Our balloon was strategically placed so that we can have this break without us seeing the seams. Mm 
move this up a little bit more. Okay. up a little bit more ah. but you see if we didn't have that that bottom um, layer that you can't see we wouldn't be able to piece this all together it would be very difficult all right so <clears throat> just want to show you kind of where we were going with this and then happy birthday goes up here let me get that So you don't see the seams in the silver at all. And that's what it's going to look like when it's done and on a foam board. So I'm gonna let you go because I know everything else is the same. You're gonna, you know, stack this here, you know, layer it. So there's that sign and the little birthday boy is gonna be wearing this. How cute, cute, right? All right. So um, this was an order. Um, but I will show you how to make it and there wasn't anything that, you know, it was basically what the customer wanted was, you know, we played, we knew we need to put things in the ears to cut up this whole thing. Um, this was nice. We didn't really need this. Where I needed help was up here. The ears are really big. I mean, look how big, it's bigger than my hand. Um, so the ears were big as well as the face. So we needed Matthew to be really big to cut it up, but we still needed to look, you know, I wish I had, um, if I had more time to redo this, like I said, oh, and I also have confetti to put around. So, you know, kind of like throw this around the floor, maybe in the face. So that's what it's all gonna look like. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. And let me know your thoughts, comments, questions, and I will talk to you next time. Bye.